Hello everybody and welcome to the second day of Advent of Code 2023. We have another set of two problems before us, so let's get started. Uh, this day, it's gonna be about a cube conundrum. Interesting. So let's read through uh, the problem description. So here's some backstory about it. Uh, so we have arrived at the snow island uh, where is no slow uh, snow surprisingly so there is a small bag with some cubes which are either red green or blue and as we play this game with the elf he will hide a secret number of cubes of each color in the bag and you, our goal is to figure out the information about the number of cubes So the elf will be reaching into the bag and grabbing a handful of random cubes and showing them uh, to us. Then uh, he will put the cubes back and it's gonna happen a few times per game. So uh, we will be recording um, information from each game which will be the puzzle input and each game will be listed with an ID number. So uh, we'll get this kind of input where game uh, one, uh, game ID, colon, and the semicolon separate list of subsets of cubes that were revealed from the bag. So this is the set of games, uh, sample input. So I will uh, get started right away and copy and paste this sample input in, um, in my uh, prepared project. And then in game one, so we have uh, three sets of cubes. So this is the first set, second set, and third set. Every time it's separated by colon. And the elf would like to know which games would have been possible if the bag contained only 12 red cubes, 13 red, uh, green cubes, and 14 blue cubes. So basically we will have uh, to find those which would be uh, possible. So this says that uh, one, two and five would be possible, but the game three would be impossible because there is 20 reds and there is just 12 of them. Uh, game four would be impossible because we have seen 15 blue and there is, there is supposed to be just uh, 14 blue cubes. And our goal is to sum up the number, the IDs of the games that would have been possible. Uh, so it would be 1 plus 2 plus 5, which would be 8. So given the puzzle input, we, get, we are supposed to uh, calculate the sum of the IDs that would be possible. So that seems uh, fairly straightforward. So let's get started right away. Uh, we will have to read the games one by one and then uh, check if those were, are possible or not. So what I, will, what I will do is we will have to separate the line first by the colon to get uh, the game ID that we'll parse and then separate it by semicolons to get the individual uh, rounds of the game and then by colon to get the individual uh, s like num uh, numbers for given colors and then we'll sum it up and uh, compare it to the given 12, 13 and 14. So let's get started our right way. So we uh, have, we'll have, uh, uh, can we have const here? Uh, maybe yes. Uh, so it's gonna be well, maybe let's do it. Uh, let's do the reading first. So we'll go while uh, console read line is uh, line. So we get, uh, so we read the input while there is sum. Uh, we have also running total, uh, which is going to be the uh, running total of uh, IDs of the games that are possible and at the end we will just output that running total uh, to the uh, to the output file now we 
take the line and we'll separate it. Oh, right. We'll separate it, uh, split it by column. So it's going to be game info. The first part of the game uh, is going to be the part which contains the name of the game uh, itself, uh, space and uh, the ID. So if we split the first part uh, by space and then parse the second component of it, it's going to be the game ID. Parse, we parse the first component. So that's, that's our game ID. And now we need to get the individual rounds. So rounds, we split the game info uh, one by semicolon, which is here. And maybe there is a way to, oh well, yeah. So let's split it. Uh, there is string split options, string split options, stream entries, just to trim the white space from there. Why do I have it here? Let's move it for whole screen. So now uh, for each round, we, sep we uh, take the components and again, split them by commas. So for each round in rounds, we will split the round uh, uh, or split the round by comma and again let's use the uh, string split option to trim and trees just to make it uh, nicer and then for each color we will uh, get the numeric value. So now, uh, now let's have the. So, uh, well, where do we store the maximum? So, and max red is gonna be twelve. Then max green is gonna be thirteen, and const. Max blue is gonna be 14, which is 13, 14, yes. And now we will, uh, for each of this, and for of those entries, we will check if it's blue, red, or green, and then compare uh, to the maximum. So, so par for for each uh, color, color. Oh, come on. In color infos. Oh, come on, not this. <laughs> There's a lot of auto generated code by copilot, but I don't want that. I just want to split it by space, get the color count and color name. So the first component is a color count, the second component is color name, and then I check if color name e. Oh, so let's switch it. So switch color name. So it's not going to be case uh, red if, uh, if color count is greater than a maximum of uh, red. We oh, let's have a let's have a pool is round valid true so at the, at the beginning the round will be valid but we need to or uh, actually not the round we can uh, keep the keep it here is game valid so the individual games need to be valid so if the game uh, initially it's going to be valid but in case we uh, we find out that a color is uh, color count is greater than allowed, then we will uh, set it to false and break. So we'll break out of this for each loop. And then if uh, is game wallet equals, if not 
with gimbal it then we break out of the outer loop as well so we have marked that game as invalid and if uh, game is is game valid if the game was uh, indeed valid then we will a running total increase by game id so that's correct now the same thing we do for uh what is this uh, right there needs to be a needs to be a break okay we yeah so we need to break here but this will break out of the switch itself uh, so we don't necessarily need to continue but it's not a big deal right in this case and this is not going to be in parse but it's going to be just getting that color name itself so case green and we uh, in case green well we do, we do the same thing for the free just need to make sure we don't do any copy paste error here so let's hide this it's just a lot of text so green red green so max green and max blue right that should be it so i hope there is no uh, weird weirdness where we would have like number green red and then a green again in the same round so that would make things less usable but we'll hope that it's not going to be this tricky and for uh, like in spite of the uh, problem solvers so hopefully this should be uh, good enough as a solution so let's run this and we will see if it outputs the right result for the sample input. Let's open that pin folder and output txt is 8, which seems to be correct. All right, so now let's take the full input, copy and paste it. Let's see, there seems to be no tricky input hopefully it will be enough so let's run our solution against the big one and now again check the output which is now 2348 which is it's correct okay so we have uh, the first part of the problem solved and now let's jump to the second one So, uh, part two. The elf says that they've stopped losing snow because they aren't getting any water. So we now have will have to uh, work with water as well. Uh, in each game that we played, what is the fewest number of cubes of each color that could have been in the bag to make the game possible? So essentially we are searching for the lowest Num common uh, value for the color itself. So we would need four reds because we need uh, like the we are searching for the maximum of each round of a given game. Uh, so yes, so we need six red, three green, on two. Uh, it seems pretty straightforward, I guess. And then uh, the, resu the resulting sum that we need to get is the power of a set of cubes is equal to the numbers of red and green and blue cubes multiplied together. So we'll mul multiply the numbers uh, together and the power of the minimum set of cubes in game one is 48 because there is uh, 24 times 2, 48. In games, ah, okay, so so we add up all those five powers uh, producers, and uh, we have the sum of two thousand two hundred eighty-six. So, uh, what is the sum of the powers of those sets? So this is just uh, the same problem, I would say, just rephrased a little differently. So we'll uh, just reuse what we have so far, get the same input. Oh, let's, let's start with the simple one, just to confirm that we don't make any mistake here 
And now let's try to figure out the solution here. Actually, I will just copy the solution to output file so we have it stored nicely. And now we no longer care about validity of games, uh, but we will keep running maximum over each game, uh, over each round. So max red, uh, max green and max blue. And if it's going to be red, we will in set max red equals math max of color count and max red. And the same thing here for green and the same thing here for blue. So it's going to be blue and green. So very simply and then Uh, after all of the rounds, we will have the actual maximum uh, required number for each of the colors. Now we will uh, multiply those values together. So product will be equal to exactly this number and running total will be a running total plus equals the product. So this should be, if I'm not mistaken, the correct solution to the second part. And I will run it against a sample program, uh, uh, problem to see if it's really the case. And that seems to be correct. Uh, no, it's not correct. Sorry. Uh, I'm looking into the wrong folder here. So this one. 2286. That seems pretty promising. So let's do uh, the pick file, run it, and the output is 76,008. And that's correct. All right. So we have completed the second day of Advent of Code 2023. I hope. Uh, my solution will help you maybe uh, figure out your own solution or improve upon yours. I'm not sure uh, if this is the most efficient solution, but it's definitely working. Uh, and uh, I think that's that's going to be it from today's uh, video. I will actually just make sure that I copy the uh, correct result into my output file here. And if you want to get notified about next Advent of Code videos or future videos that I will make on this channel, uh, please give me a subscribe. Uh, I will really appreciate it. And uh, I will also publish another video where I will give the same problem to the AI, to ChatGPT, to see if it's going to fare better than the previous day, where it had quite a big trouble with the second part of uh, the first day of Advent of Code 2023. So I, I, I guess this one could be more uh, to its liking, but we will see, we will see. It might be interesting to see how uh, ChatGPT will do this. All right, thank you very much. Have a great day and keep coding.